So in the previous lesson, we learned how to install the CentOS 8.1 on Rail Server 1. In this lesson, we will learn how to install Red Hat 8.0 on Rail Server 2, which will be the second virtual machine for our lab. So to install the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, just as we did with Rail Server 1, we have to configure Rail Server 2 to be on the virtual network we created. And to do that, you can see it has been done down here. So NAT network, Linux network. The next thing is to attach the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 ISO image, which I have done here as well. Now, once these steps have been completed, we are ready to start the installation process. And we start the process by starting the virtual machine. In this particular lesson, I'll go through the process very quickly because you've seen how it all happens from the beginning to the end. And because our focus in this lesson will be on how to partition our disks, I'll move straight to that configuration and we we'll see how that works. Then we'll wait for the installation to complete and we'll have two servers now, one running CentOS 8 and the other running Red Hat Enterprise 8. These machines will be used in our practical labs. Okay, so you've seen this screen before, so I'll just go to continue. All right, we've seen this screen also. I'll just make some few changes here. All right, so this is where we want to make the changes. So instead of going with automatic partitioning, we want to go with custom partitioning. In this case, we want to create the partitions ourselves. So you just check the radio button next to custom and click done. When you click done, you get another window which says manual partitioning. So this is the window where you have to create the partitions that are required for the Linux operating system installation. Now, there are three partitions you have to create for the Linux operating system to be installed and boot up. The first partition is the boot partition. The boot partition will contain all the files necessary for the Linux operating system to be loaded. The second partition is the swap partition. This serves as a paging file for the Linux system. When we say a paging file, it means that this space will only be used when our memory is full. And the last partition we need to create is the root partition. This is a partition which will contain all the configuration files needed by the root user to manage and configure the Linux system. So let's create these partitions. To create the partition, you click on the add button here. And the first partition we want to create in Linux, also known as a mount point, is the boot partition. So you click the drop down arrow and you select boot. Then you put in the size for this particular partition. So you want 500 maybe bytes for the partition. Then the next partition we have to create is the swap partition. So you click on your add again. Then we have swap here. And the size that we want for this partition. So we are going to go with two Gibby byte. And we click add mount point. Now the next thing we have to do with a swap partition is to change the device type or the partition type. We will learn more about the partition types and the file systems in a later lesson. For now, change it from LVM to standard partition. Now we are left with one more partition to create, which is the root partition. 
So we click on the add button again, and then the root partition is represented by the forward slash as the mount point. So you select that, then we will give this 10 EB byte, then add mount point. Now you can see that whilst creating the partitions, I left some space unallocated. This space will be used in the later lesson as we learn about disk partition. So ensure you also have some space unallocated on your system disk for that particular exercise. And just like we did with the swap partition, we change the device type from LVM to standard partition. And as I stated, we will learn more about the partition type and file systems in a later lesson All right so this is how you perform your manual partitioning or custom partitioning whilst you install your red hat enterprise linux 8. remember the three partitions required the boot partition the root partition and the swap partition now we are all set to go so we click done then we accept the changes we want to make to the disk. Now from here, you know what to do. You go to network and host name, turn on the network adapter, and we can see we obtain the IP address from our DHCP server. We are not setting the host name just like we did with real server one. So you click done. Nothing under security policy and nothing under system purpose as well. But right, we will talk more about that in a later lesson. Just make sure your software selection is server with GUI and we are good to go, All right? So we can begin the installation, set the root password. And I believe from here, you know the steps. So I'm going to pause this video and we'll meet in the next lecture.